All right, this video is all about how to handle power in a very large base. Well, I don't know if it's a large base, but it's a lot of power. So what I've set up, I set it up really big on the map. And I, what I was trying to do is demonstrate, yeah, I have two power stations, one way up here and one way down here. They each generate 20 kilowatts of power. And I'm trying to, the reason I did that was because I was like, oh, I want to demonstrate that they can be far away and still supply you know, power to the same grid um, to all of the things that need power. Uh, for, well, for this strategy, some of you might not like this strategy I'm about to show you because it's a little bit, it's a little bit exploity. But it, I mean, it's clearly the way they also designed um, electricity to work in oxygen not included. Uh, so I, I don't think it's going to change. Although I got to say, I'm not real satisfied with anything that feels exploity. Still, this is the way I have it set up in my base, so I'll show you this first. Um, also, it's definitely the easy way to do it. Uh, so, this power generator generates uh, 20 kilowatts when it's running. Let's see, I'll unpause this. Okay, it's technically running right now, but you know its batteries are full, so it's not doing anything. Uh, the first thing, this is a sandbox. The first thing you need is to take all the power and put it on like a central, you know, one main power grid. And the way that's done is, this is the surprising part. Let's see, get some tiles to put some things on. I'm just gonna put three, four, five, five big large power transformers here. And the reason I'm using five is because that's how many you need for 20 kilowatts. Uh, so that's the most amount of power you can, you can draw from a heavy cable like this one, 20 kilowatts. And the crazy thing is I'm going to put all of that power on a one kilowatt wire. Uh, cheap, you could run it all over your base in all different directions. One one kilowatt wire, it wouldn't cost you that much. And it can carry, believe it or not, I know it sounds crazy, but it can carry all of the power you need for your entire base from all of your generators everywhere to everything that needs it. And uh, I'm going to show you how. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing down here with my other power station, which also generates 20 kilowatts. One, two, three, four, five. That'll be five transformers. And I'll hook those into... Uh, so they, they'll draw 20 kilowatts of power from this generator and I'll connect those wires the one kilowatt tiny weak wire the reason why this seems exploity is is literally because you can do this using this tiny thin cheap wire um, so now the, the wire the one kilowatt wire won't overload unless there's more than a than you know one kilowatt uh, of power being drawn from it and the catch is that a battery doesn't count as a power consumer. So you can hook as many batteries up to this as you want and charge them as fast as you want and it won't overload the wire. Um, so let's see. So I have this, this bank of refrigerators uh, will consume 20 kilowatts. Uh, so it takes a tremendous amount of power. Um, and I'm going to show you how to draw that much power from your one one kilowatt wire to and supply it to the fridges. So you can you can make let's see how do I usually do this? Let's do it like this. You can make a uh, it's perfectly fine to charge a battery. So the trick is we want to charge one battery while the other one is supplying power to the fridges and. Uh, and then switch when the, when the power gets low on the battery that's supplying power to the fridges, we switch to charging that battery while the first battery supplies power to the fridges. Uh, so it just switches back and forth. And as long as the one kilowatt wire itself is never connected directly to the fridges, then it will never get overloaded. Uh, so the way we do that, we need switches so we can switch back and forth. I, uh, well, let me see for how we're doing that. I'm going to stick them above and below. Uh, it doesn't matter. And honestly, it changes every time I do it. So, <laughs> uh, 
All right, so the power comes in there. Oh, you know what? Since this is a really high, since I'm doing 20 kilowatts, I can't go through the four. Uh, okay, I, I guess I'll do it anyways, because the more I think about it, the weirder it gets if I don't. So we'll go through, we'll go through the four. Uh, in practice, you probably won't ever do this on something that needs 20 kilowatts of power. It'll be limited to, you know, uh, what's the maximum for a, a conductive wire? Two kilowatts? I'll just check real quick. This is the kind of thing I should know. Two kilowatts, right. Um, usually you'll just, you'll just draw two kilowatts at a time from the, from the, the cheap wire here. So, in fact, I've never used heavy watt wire except in my power generators, as a matter of fact, because it, just because, I mean, what what needs 20 kilowatts? I mean, you, you've got to break everything down to two kilowatts at some point anyway, it seems like. That's, okay, that's not explicitly true, but uh, the way I played the game, that's how it is. Uh, anyways, for this experiment, we definitely need our heavy wire. So, connects to the one kilowatt wire when the battery is charging and it connects to all of these refrigerators when it's not. I, I didn't put cables in here, so I guess it's time. So there, powering all these fridges. I believe there's 166 of them to make to make 20 kilowatts. Oops. Oops, there we go. Gotta learn not to say oops like a girl whenever I do something wrong. It'll never happen. I'm always gonna say that. Alright, so we have two batteries. They're connect oh geez. <laughs> right now everything's connected, so I am it's I'm gonna overload the wire, right? So I, I didn't do that in a very good order. Um, I paused it so it wouldn't so it wouldn't break anything. Okay, so now what we need to do is have these is control these switches so that they they alternate the batteries, which whichever one between powering and charging. Um, the automation for that isn't too hard, so I'm going to start with a not gate. So let's say I have use one battery to control all four switches. So when this battery gets low, this when this battery gets low, this uh, what do they call this shut off has to close so that it lets power through. And this shutoff has to open so that it doesn't let power through. Um, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna do the one that op the ones that open first. So here's a not gate so that that power switch will open so that it does not let power through. And the same, the opposite thing has to happen for these switches. So when this when this one needs power, then this one has to be powering stuff and not charging so this one has to be open and not let power through i'm saying that the long way because open and closed and is that's the terminology i use but i mean open seems like on also hmm. um all right so these two these two switches will be open and now these two have to be closed so it seems like you should be able to just connect the wire directly to it the problem is that the NOT gate introduces a very short delay. So this wire will turn on and it takes like one, one tick for the NOT gate to propagate the, uh, uh, to, to, to switch to off in this case. Uh, and, and you need, if you connect this directly to these, then you don't get the same delay. The delay it takes, uh, it, it changes instantly and the NOT gate doesn't. And that's actually enough time for you know the game to detect that you have too much power on this one kilowatt wire uh, running all the way through the battery and it will break stuff. So we need to introduce a delay to make it equal to the NOT gate. And you can do that. I've always used an OR gate. I, I imagine there's other ways. So the OR gate turns it on and the NOT gate turns that off. And by off, I mean open, <laughs> an open gate. Uh, all right, and we do the same thing for this gate, this, I mean, this shut off over here. So we, just like that, great. All right, now that should work, I'll unpause this. All right, now you see this, this, uh, something seems strange here. So this should be powering everything. Did something break? I'm confused. Oh, no, now it's working. 
All right. Oh, I know what's going on. So what, what's happening is, um, yeah, I understand what's happening. Um, all right. Now, it takes a second for these switches to switch. So when the battery gets runs out of power, uh, there's no power left, and all the power gets cut off to the things, like the fridges, while the switching is happening. And in order to prevent that from happening, you have to start switching the switches before the battery is completely dead. And if you, in, in the case of, usually I set it to about 20, 20% 20 of the battery is left, uh, but I, that's usually for like two kilowatt, you know, uh, circuits. This is a 20 kilowatt circuit. And believe it or so, I think if we set it to like 80, it's a little counterintuitive, but you should, we should see the batteries. They both drain about the same amount when they get a turn to power the fridges. So this one comes down to, looks like about a quarter, and this one comes down to about a quarter. And that's ideal. Uh, these switches are going to, these shutoffs are going to go nuts back and forth really fast. But I mean, you have 20 kilowatts going through this, so I mean, you're going to expect it to have to do some work. And uh, the reason it's ideal is because if something goes wrong in your power grid anywhere, then these batteries, like you're not generating enough power, then these buffers, meaning the leftover power in the battery, is as much as possible. And you get that when you're producing 20 kilowatts if you set this to about 80. Switches back and forth real quick. And uh, so that's that. And you can see the fridges None of them, none of them have the little power blinker red thing on it, so they're all they're all getting power. Um, now at the very same time, all right, I know it's already a magic trick because we're putting all that power through a one kilowatt wire, um, but I want to I have these other two banks just to demonstrate that you can do it all over your base, and not only that, but the neat thing is you can. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter where your power generators are. Oh, you know it's weird. This is not generating power. It must be getting all the power from the top, and it is indeed. These things just just generating power as fast as they can. Um, that's actually pretty typical, by the way. Like you'll notice that the power grid tends to it goes to the same place all the time until that place is out of power, and then it'll go to the next place to get more power. And I'm not sure why the dynamic works that way, but it surely does. Um, so I made a couple more banks of refrigerators to demonstrate this whole thing. And I'm just going to set it up exactly the same. This one's 10 kilowatts, by the way. I should do a 2 kilowatt one, shouldn't I? Well, it, you know, the 2 kilowatt one is exactly the same. You don't use, you know, you wouldn't use a heavy watt cable for it. You'd use just a regular conductive wire. Um, so. I will just I'll just do the same thing. It's exactly the same setup. What I'm trying to demonstrate the reason I the reason I have so much is because I wanted to show that you can do. You're not even limited to 20 kilowatts. Oh, so let's go this way. You're not even limited to 20 kilowatts this way. You can do 40 in this case, or you know, a thousand. Like it doesn't matter. This wire still doesn't have anything. That, you know, the the cheap wire still doesn't have anything on it that. Uh, consumes power officially according to the game. So, heavy conductive wire. Uh, yep, go right through here to this switch. And this one goes right through here to this switch. I gotta put the automation in before I start connecting stuff like I did last time and break things. So, alright, so we'll let this battery control it. So, when it needs power, that one turns off, that one turns off. This one turns on, that one turns on, and uh, that controls this gate, this gate, that gate, that gate. And these control that shut off, that shut off, that shut off, and that shut off. All right, that should do it. And we'll set the, uh, I'm going to set this to 50% so it doesn't thrash so fast. And now we just need to connect all the fridges. Power all those things. There's like 83, 83 refrigerators in this bank, and there's the uh, there's the batteries. Charging, switching, discharging, doing their thing, just like these ones. 
I'm interested, like, I wonder if something will happen when we get... When we're using the entire 40 kilowatts, is it going to have, is it going to, is this going to work? I think it will, because as long as you can generate 40 kilowatts, you should be able to consume 40 kilowatts. Even if there's some buffering involved, the buffers will get full and uh, it should work, right? So I guess we can call that an experiment. We'll try that out. So I'll put a couple more batteries over here for this. This I have another, in case you're wondering what I'm doing, there's yet another bank of refrigerators to power so that we can use that entire 40 kilowatts in yet another place in my base, connecting connected by nothing but this cheap wire. Uh, let's see, put some shutoffs in. There and one there, and one there and one there. This is sort of a this is sort of a lousy layout for the batteries, but you know sometimes you cram them in wherever, and uh, it, it doesn't ever, doesn't always come out pretty. And the th reason mine are coming out weird now is because I'm using this heavy kilowatt wire, this heavy watt wire. I'm used to the uh, uh, you know the two kilowatt one, the conductive wire. All right, automation. We'll let this battery control it. So that one's got to turn off off, on, on, whoops, that's not right, uh, yeah, that's, how I just, okay, all right, I screwed that up, I screwed that one up, um, put my cable back in, whoops, okay, that's better, uh, connect that, connect that, connect that, Two, three, four. Great. Unpause it. And I'll just connect all these guys. Another 83 of them. All right, now we have, oh, I didn't set the, uh, Thing in this one, I'll set it that one to 50% as well, I suppose. So the reason why the batteries got full and they paused is because the refrigerators all ran out of power and they just turn off for a couple of seconds while it, and so it has nothing to power. In case you're wondering why it looks funny. All right, so now we're using a total, we're using 40 kilowatts total through this one little wire, and. Not having any power issues in that bank. No power issues in that bank. I don't see any power issues in that bank. Um, so, so I think we're all set. I think that that's a good demo of this working. Um, this this power <laughs> this uh, power plant is running as hard as it can, and it ca so much it can't even fill its batteries, which makes sense because we're using all the power, and this one is doing the same thing. Nice. Great. Uh, so there's something I want to show you guys before, uh, before I end of the video. If you look around on the forums, forums and stuff, you're sure to run into this strategy for doing the battery part of that, you know, that whole power distribution idea. Um, and I, I know it's hard to see because this is a screenshot of the, uh, of the automation, but there's a pair of batteries on the top and a pair of batteries on the bottom. And uh, you know, big cable comes in on the right and goes out on the left. It's really the same thing as as my battery setup for drawing power off of the little wire. I mean, it's the same except that the symmetry is beautiful and the automation is very clever. And as appealing as it is to me, it turns out that it has a weakness. And so, don't use this one. Um, it'll seem to work great, uh, but sooner or later, the pair of batteries on the top will change its state at the exact same time that the pair of batteries on the bottom change their state. And when that happens, the whole thing breaks. So stay away from that one. All right, so the last, the last thing to mention is that this is, like I really kind of feel like this is an exploity way to do it because, you know, because of the little wire. Um, so I should probably do a different video for other ways to handle power. Um, I guess the one other way to handle power, but it's not, it's not like there's no tricks to it or anything like that. You just have to build power generators, you know, in different places in your base and um, probably, well, let's not talk about it too much. That's for the next video. So um, I guess that's the end.